As a kid playing his first game, Len Archer lined him up. Bang! I got home after the game. Uh, I walked in the lounge room. We had a really good win that day too. And uh, I thought the wife would be happy with me. And she turned and gave me a dirty look. And I thought, what have I done? And she goes, why did you run into that young kid? The young boy playing his first game, Lenny Hayes. He ran in, bowled him over. I said, I can't remember. I obviously ran in to try and get the ball and knocked him over. Who cares? So uh, the love for Lenny started very early in my household. <laughs> no doubt, uh, Glenn Archer, he's been making a big impact since his uh, first game till now, some 293 games later. And Lenny Hayes, uh, he plays his last game in Melbourne on Sunday. It's a tribute match at Etihad Stadium versus the Dogs. And I'm sure there'll be a double the normal crowd to welcome Lenny and say farewell. Uh, great to have you on for the last time as a player, Lenny. Yeah, thanks very much, Jared. It's great to be here. Do you remember your first game? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I remember it pretty well. I, I haven't been able to forget it after <laughs> Archer cleaned me up. It was a, a really fair hit. We, we, uh, no free kick for that? No. For, oh, I think I did get a free kick, but... Um, Archer get three weeks today. <laughs> yeah, he might. <laughs> no, he got me up the middle, so I think it was all fair, but we, we ended up losing that game, so a little bit disappointed. Do you remember your first kick? Yeah, I do. It was on my left. It was out of bounds on the form. I hit one of the trainers in the head. It was <laughs> just right. before half-time too, so... Wasn't the best start. Well, it's gone on from there. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't the best start, I've got to say, on the siren. That uh, is quite uh, amusing. You're known as the candy man. Uh, you must be making millions out of uh, selling candy all over the side. Oh, look, it's, it's one of those things I guess I picked up, you know, playing a lot of touch football and a bit of rugby uh, throughout my school years, and I was never overly blessed with pace, Mike, so I... Um, yeah, you know, I had to throw it, throw it out there every now and again, and, and luckily uh, a lot of guys have fallen for it. Let me take you back to the 1998 draft. You're a Sydney boy, Pennant Hills. Yep. The draft comes along. The Swans take three players, Nick Fosdyke, Ryan Fitzgerald and Jude Bolton before you. Were you offended by that, and did you understand why? No, I wasn't offended at all. I think, I think my mum was probably more offended than anyone. She would have loved to have, have had me stay in Sydney, but I think, um, look, the, all three of those guys were... You know, great players in their own right, and I think sometimes with with younger guys, we're we're in their backyard, and almost sometimes they see too much of you, and they can pick up the things that you don't do so well, as compared to the things you do well. So, I guess I, I knew probably halfway through the year, and you know, Stevie Wright was my coach, and and I'd played a reserve grade game for the Swans, and um, he sort of said, look, don't get your hopes up. There's there's you know 15 other teams out there, and. Um, you're a good chance to go to any one of those. So I didn't go into the draft expecting to go to Sydney and I was certainly pretty wrapped to get picked up in St Kilda. Twelve months later, Lenny, there was a story, I don't know whether it was fact or fiction, that St Kilda and the Swans were prepared to deal on Bolton and Hayes. You'd go back to Sydney and Jude Bolton would come back to Melbourne. Do you know of that story? No, I only heard about it probably two weeks ago when um, Timmy Watson got on the radio and, and said that. So it's certainly a surprise to me. but. You know, played against Jude at under-18 level as well, and you know we we saw what a great career he had. So it probably would have been a a win-win for both clubs. Mm -hmm. Lenny, I don't think anyone's been held in higher regard than you. It's been an outstanding career, and I congratulate you on that. Did you love the game more? And we just saw footage of your first game back when you started, as opposed to what the game is now. How how have you seen it evolve? Oh, I still love the game more than ever, Jase. It's um, it certainly has changed a lot, um, but it's the the passion for me is still there. Um, with football and um, look at, I guess the game's sped up a lot. I think the game's still really tough. Mm. Um, there's a lot of talk about the state of the game, but I think it's, it's still in really good condition and I think it's going to sort itself out. Um, I think there's a lot of scrutiny and there's a lot, a lot more media talk these days than there was back when I first started, but it's certainly, um, you know, it's certainly evolved, but I think it's, it's still a great game. It's an outstanding career. I mean, incredibly uh, decorated career. What's your philosophy on taggers? A, like, mm -hmm. do the umpires give enough, enough protection? B, how you, sh how you should be able to deal with them, those sorts of things? Got to be a little bit careful. One of my best mates, <laughs> Stephen Baker, was, was, was a renowned tagger. Um, but no, look, I think they're a part of the game. Um, I, I think that you do need to protect the ball player. And the only, the only thing that I don't like, and when I used to get tagged, I don't get tagged anymore, but um, when they'd turn their back on the play and would just face you and... Really tells me to stop whinging because he gets that every week. Yeah. But look, they're a part of the game and they always have been, and I think there's still a place for them. Lenny, at the risk of reopening old wounds, the grand finals. You've got a Norm Smith as sort of some compensation, but the pain of that, the pain of playing in three, drawing one, and losing two, it's going to live with you forever, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, it was, it was certainly disappointing at the time not to 
be able to hold that cup up and you know for a long period of time that was my my goal um, in, in football was to, to be able to do that and achieve that with my teammates but as I've said in the past I, I don't have any regrets and I think that those teams couldn't have done any more to try and get over the line so in that um, I, I feel a sense of, of real pride in, in how we went about it. At the end of the day it's disappointing not to get it because I know how much it would have meant to all the players and staff and all of our fans but I do know that when we do win that premiership you know I'll be in the stands and I'll certainly have a big smile on my face. Lenny, one of the most emotional scenes I've ever seen in a grand final is when you embraced Luke Ball afterwards. What were you thinking? What did you say? Oh look I think that's uh, it's I, I didn't really say anything to be honest. Baller came up to me and I think it shows the class of the guy mm. that he went out of his way to come up and you know we'd obviously played a bit on each other that day and um, you know just I guess shared his commiserations with me and I felt that that was you know it was pretty touching at the time because I, I knew how ecstatic he would have been but I thought it showed a lot of class the way that Paulie came up and did that and he was a great player for us it was very hard playing against him but obviously you know he's had a fantastic career and you know wished him all the best. There's a lot of luck in football, as in being at the right club at the right time to enjoy the ultimate success. Is there, uh, or are there varying degrees of success? For instance, if you've played at a club where you haven't won a premiership, do you consider it success, the fact that you've been to the last weekend in September? I think, um, I think when I look back over my career, when I first got to the club, we, we weren't doing so well. We had a couple of coach changes early in my career, and I think we, we got a really good young group of players together and we I felt like we really stood for something over a long yep. period of time and when you look back it's you know the end result is that premiership and unfortunately we didn't get that but I think for a long period of time for a club that has been starved of su success I think we had quite a successful era in terms of being able to give ourselves a chance to win that yep. um, and, and that I'm really proud of. What did you think when you saw your mates, long serving teammates Goddard, Del Santo, McAvoy all leave? Um, yeah, initially it was uh, it was disappointing because I played a lot of football with those guys, and but 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 then again I understand where the club was at, um, and sometimes in football, I guess all the time, football players, coaches, staff, they move on, and the club have gone down a certain path with with trying to get in draft picks, and and the situation we're in right now reminds me of when I first got to the club, so I understand that that's all part of the process, and whilst it's it's not enjoyable playing against those guys, it's. I'm really thankful that I got to play a lot of football with those guys at the same time. They went uh, via free agency. Uh, you've picked up a couple of players via free agency. What's your view on it? Because people not so long out of the game as players, um, Chris Scott for instance, not overly thrilled with uh, what free agency is doing and I think uh, collectively the coaches think it's a major blight and problem for the game. I'll probably need a couple more years just to see how it pans out. I think. What it does do, it gives players a bit more freedom and a, and a few more options because I think for a long time the club's held all the power. So in that sense, I think it's a, it's a good thing for players to be able to have that opportunity to get to another club. But I think in the, in the long term of things, I think I need a couple more years just to see how it does pan out. And as you said, we've lost a couple of players, but we've also gained some as well. So I think we've won and lost off it. Damien Hardwick's shown interest in you, I think, 12 months ago. A lot of people think that your future lies in coaching. Is that correct? Oh, look, I'm, I'm still not 100% sure, Jay. So I'd, I initially said that I wanted to get the decision about retirement out of the way then, and then play the last few games and, and in that time and over the next probably two months make a de decision on my future. I've done some coaching courses and things like that, but whether that's going to be the next part of my career or not, I'm, I'm still not 100% sure. You're renowned for getting the most out of yourself. Uh, you've got a few players at St Kilda that probably are going to determine whether you rise up rapidly or don't rise at all. One of them is Reece Stanley. I mean, he's one of the great athletes that's playing at the present time. He's starting to show some signs and yet it still seems as if he's sprinting uh, at one level and then he's jogging at the next. Well, look, he's certainly come under a fair amount of scrutiny, but the guy's only played, I think, just over 50 games. I think he's only about 23, so... We certainly haven't seen the best of Reese, um, but he's probably been a little bit indicative of where we are as a team. We've just been a little bit up and down and we're looking for everyone to be a bit more consistent. So I've got no doubt his best foot is ahead of him and you know, I'd like him to see you know, him stay at the club for another 10 years because I think he's going to be a fantastic player. Lenny, the number seven guernsey has been worn by Nicky Winmar and your good self over a long period. Is it true that you've suggested to Luke Dunstan that he take it on? Uh, look, I haven't, I haven't suggested that, Mike, but... Look, that's something that we'll, we'll talk about over the next few weeks, but he's certainly a guy that I've worked really closely with and I love the way he goes about it, so I could see him fitting very nicely into it, but um, yeah, yet to make a decision on that. 
Congratulations on a great career. Yeah. It's been a uh, privilege to watch you play. And it'll be uh, great to see uh, hundreds of thousands of people cram into Eddie Hadd Stadium with the roof closed uh, to see your final game. Thanks so Congratulations much. and thanks for your time. Thanks, Jerry. Well, now, Jace, uh, this T-shirt speaks for all football followers. Absolutely. Now, I've got a good friend called Mike Lenny. Uh, just a young bloke. Can you sign it here, Mike? All Why the best. Hold it up so we can have a good look at it, Michael. I did. Uh, yeah, uh, we missed it the first time round. <laughs> That's it. Good on you, Lenny. Thanks for your time. Thanks, guys. Lenny Hayes. Plenty more to come on the couch.